It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science quiz program here in the Prince George's Schools where we test science IQs. And you know, watch along today and play along today and uh, check your own science IQ. I know these students are gonna be impressive. The students you're meeting today are one of eight schools that made it from the 32 schools we started to the semifinal. So this is a semifinal game. The schools playing today, Rogers Heights and Whitehall uh, have won twice previously and hope to advance to this year's finals. Will this be a championship team you're looking at first? It may be. All right. Our science ball game is played online. We've done it for the past couple of years. Our team start out at 50 points, no penalties for incorrect answers. And uh, we have our typical categories. We go from green things to dateline science with questions worth 5, 15, and 25 points. So without further ado, let's get started and meet that team from Rogers Heights. Say hello to their captain, Lander. Hey, Lander, wave to everybody at home. Good player, fine young man, and Chastity, nice to have you here. She is a sixth grader. Chastity, nice to have you back. And Jeremiah is a fifth grader. Hey, Jeremiah, everybody's smiling. They're ready to roll. So let's do it. Let's play the science ball. Let's go to the green things category with your five-point question. Here we go. Although it doesn't have spines or grow in a desert, one of these house plants that blooms in late December is still called a Christmas what? Any idea, Sash? So, uh, uh, Jeremiah, may you rephrase the question, please? So basically what he said is, even though it doesn't have spines and it doesn't grow in the desert, um, it's still in your house decoration. So maybe if you mentioned desert and spines, I'm thinking cactus, a Christmas That is cactus. correct. That is correct, a Christmas cactus. If you've ever seen one, it looks like the flowers that are produced were stuck on because somehow they come out of these uh, very ordinary looking green stems. Good start, five points. Let's go to 15 points in green things. The bald cypress trees are unusual in that even though they have needles, they shed them each year, meaning they aren't really carnivorous trees, carnivorous, but rather these kinds of trees that shed. Any ideas, guys? Oh, Marsupial deciduous? trees? Deciduous? deciduous? Yeah. Yeah, it is deciduous, absolutely right. Yes, they, they aren't strictly coniferous, even though they have needles, but since they shed them, they are also considered deciduous. Nice answer, you're two for two. Let's go to 25 points in green things. <laughs> oh, this is a little off color here. Tree farts, we didn't know the trees farted. Tree farts, the gases released by dead trees include methane and nitrogen oxide. Those gases, since they cause the earth to warm up, just as the sun entering through glass structures makes it easier for plants to grow, are known as these kinds of gases that make the earth grow warmer. Any ideas, guys? So basically what he's asking us is uh, methane gas and I think hydrogen gas is what he said. Nitrogen oxide, methane uh, and nitrogen oxide. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so basically what he's asking us are, what are those gases that make the earth warmer? Um, my first idea was greenhouse gases. That is absolutely right. Lander, you got it. It is greenhouse gases. So you ran the category, 25 points. Keep it going. Let's go to the zoo. You know, for five points, if you see what looks like a fox in your backyard, you might have seen a fox in your backyard, but if its tail, its tail is hanging down instead of straight out, it's likely you've got one of these wily canines in your backyard, one that is much smarter than the one seen in cartoons with a road runner. 
coyotes. Yeah, there are coyotes around here. Don't mess with them. You know, they can attack pets, uh, but they are they're very adaptable and they seem to like our suburban neighborhoods. 15 points, let's look at a picture. It's a visual question in Zoo for 15 points. This creature is called an ard wolf. You've heard of ard varks. This is an ard wolf, A-A-R-D-W-O-L-F. It looks like a hyena, but it's actually a very shy creature that feeds almost exclusively on what insects that build huge mounds in Africa and are associated in this country with eating the wood in our houses? Termites. It is termites. Absolutely right. They are termite eaters, even they look, even though they look rather fearsome. Good answer. Zoo for 25. The long ago breeding of a male donkey and a female wild ass produced a creature called a kunga, K-U-N-G-A, a tame animal that wasn't stubborn. It was an example of this kind of animal where two different species mated and produced a creature like a mule or a kunga that in turn can't reproduce on its own. Any ideas, guys? So basically what, what he's asking us is, what is it called when two animals can't reproduce unless um, they're two different kinds of Two animals? different species that can't, uh, that produce something that itself is not capable of reproducing. Um, Chessie, any ideas? Um, I think it's like, uh, no, I don't have any ideas. Chris, the answer there, guys, is a hybrid, a hybrid. It's like if you take a lion and a tiger and they can mate, they produce something called a tiglon or a liger. It's a hybrid, but because of an odd number of chromosomes, they can't reproduce themselves. So you can only get one of those hybrids by putting the two original species back together. Still, you're doing well. Three more questions before you break. Let's do the body systems for five points. If part of your tooth starts to decay, oh, it hurts. It forms one of these that the dentist can then drill out and fill. Cavities. Yes, yes. Oh, we hate those things, don't we? Yeah. Cavity is correct. Five points. Let's go to body systems for 15 points. A group of cells that have a similar structure and function, like skin cells or heart cells or brain cells. Collectively, they are known by this T initialed name. Group of cells, same structure, same function known by this T initialed name. Skin yeah. what? Heart what? Brain what? All the same T initialed word. Any idea, Jeremiah's and Chastity? Brain oh, testum. I'm not sure. Go ahead, Jeremiah, she had an idea. No, it's okay. All right, it's called a tissue. A tissue, skin tissue, heart tissue, brain tissue, made up of cells that all do the same kind of work. Let's get this last one here for 25 points in body systems. As people get older, they run the risk of osteoporosis or weakening of their bones. So it's best for doctors to check on this D, as in David, D initialed situation of your bones, a quantity found by dividing mass by volume. If you divide mass by volume, you get this D initialed quantity that doctors would check if your bones are possibly weak. It'll let Dense you know. Density. Say it again. Density. Dense it is dense, a good answer. That got you those 25 points, which means you end the first round, Roger Tice, with 145. You're sitting pretty. Take a break, and I'll see you guys in a couple moments. Good work. It is now time to meet that team from Whitehall Elementary School, a past county champ. I know they're hoping to repeat this year in this, this semifinal game against Rogers Heights. Let's meet that team from Whitehall. Say hello, if you would, please, to the captain, Aminata. Hey, Aminata, wave to everybody, please. She's wearing our Science Bowl t-shirt. She's the captain of the team. She's the fifth grader, as is Lucas. Hey, Lucas, welcome back to the show. And another fifth grader, hey, Sebastian. 
are all wearing their Science Bowl t-shirts over there at Whitehall. All right, guys, nice to have you back. Let's play the game. Let's go to green things for five points. There are no animals with green fur, except for the slow-moving sloth, whose fur is green because this plant is growing all over it. Um, so I think it would be moth, maybe, because moth is green. Um, Me too. Yeah, that, that, that kind of makes sense, yeah. yeah. Actually, what we're looking for here is algae. Algae is, is a kind of algae on their fur there. Let's get this next one. It is a visual question. Let's look at the 15-point question in green things. It's a picture. The oldest living land animal, a giant tortoise who's thought to be 190 years old. He likes lettuce. He likes bananas. He loves pears but he turns up his nose and will not eat this K-initialed salad green known for its bitter taste. Um, I think it's kale. Kale, it's kale. 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 Yeah, yeah I, I don't like that. kale, and that tortoise, you know, after 190 years, they can't get him to eat kale. Uh, that is the correct answer for 15 points. For 25 in green things, this word, both an adjective and a noun, is used to describe plants like daffodils that continue to come back and bloom year after year. The adjective and a noun. So what would that be? That describes daffodils that come back every year. The, the word we're looking for there is a perennial. A perennial is a kind of plant that comes back every year, but the word perennial also means to come back year after year after year, as opposed to an annual plant that you have to put the seeds in each year. Let's go to the zoo. Five points. Let's get this one. Our national bird, the bald eagle, while it is a great hunter of fish, it won't pass up a free meal if it spots a dead animal on the side of the road, making the bald eagle both a predator and one of these. Um, a scavenger, a scavenger. Yeah. yeah, it's a scavenger. Yeah, it will scavenge if the opportunity presents itself. Absolutely right. Multiple choice for zoo parade for 15. If an animal is territorial, it lives in a defined area. But if it lives exclusively, exclusively on the land, an animal that lives exclusively on the land, as opposed to the sea or the air, it is also described by this adjective, terrestrial, arboreal, or natatorial. Um, I'm pretty sure it's terrestrial. Terrestrial is right, like the word terrain. And arboreal means to live in the trees, and something that is natatorial lives in the water. That's where you get the word natatorium, a swim center. All right, let's go to the last question in the zoo parade category for 25 points. Whether it's a bird using the Earth's magnetic poles, or bats using echolocation, or dung beetles using the moon, or us using our GPS, all animals have to be able to find their way around. A process known by this N initialed word um, navigation? Yeah, navigation. yeah navigation navigation is right good answer 25 points let's go to the body body systems for five points your urine contains urea u-r-e-a a substance that's critical to the removal of this chemical it is on the periodic table with the symbol n and has atomic number n Five. Um, do you guys think it's like nitrogen or something like yeah, that? Yeah, that's what I think it is. Yeah, I was thinking that, but I don't know if there's something else would be. All right, Aminata, it is your choice. The N stands uh, for what? What chemical element? Nitrogen. It is nitrogen, absolutely right. Good. Body systems for 15 points. In the book, the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. The most memorable character 
is an acephalic horseman, a person who has no what? Head. No, it, it, the head is horseman. He doesn't have any head. That's right, the headless horseman. Cephalic is a word that means head. A means without. Acephalic means without a head. Yeah, good. Liked how you parsed that. 25 points, last question in the first round. For your body to absorb calcium, which is needed to make strong bones and teeth, you need an adequate supply of this vitamin found in dairy products and cereal, but also made in your skin with the help of sunlight. Name that vitamin. Um, vitamin isn't it like D, vitamin D. Vitamin D. Yeah. Vitamin D right? Get vitamin D from the sun. It is vitamin D. Absolutely yeah, right. Good D. answer there. And that brings you to the end of your first round. You had a great round. That means you end the first round with 155 points. A wonderful effort there. We'll see you guys again in a couple of minutes. Good playing. Take it easy. It is now time to welcome back that team from Rogers Heights. If you've not had the pleasure of meeting these young people before, they've already won twice this year. This is their third appearance. Let's uh, give you the pleasure right now. Let's talk first to their captain. Lander, Lander, nice to have you back on the show. So did you ever think when you started out you'd make it this far in the competition? Um, no, not really. I was I was thinking we were going to lose. But after that, Miss uh, Dr. Pippet inspired us um, just to say answers, and share ideas. Boy, that tells you, that shows you how important a coach is, and Dr. Pitt Pitt and Mr. Walker and Ms. Bottoms, Dr. Bottom, they're all behind you there, and uh, they see things in you that you might know not see in yourself, so they, they knew you could do it. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you like to do in your spare time? Well, what I really like to do, I'm into coding, um, making stuff like, uh, I made like, light bulb that connects to an outlet so I, I do coding and stuff like that. That's wonderful. In fact, I saw recently a young man who was coding and was making a book. He was writing a book and parts of it was, were lighting up as, as he, uh, he set it up. Nicely done. Good luck in the second half. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go to uh, Chastity. Chastity, nice to have you back with us today. Chastity, uh, what is your secret sauce? What do you guys do to know so much science? Well, we, we mainly read and we watch science book videos or we would have like these little cahoots or quizzes we take before we, before we start um, training. That's great. You're, all, you're doing the right things. What do you like to do in your spare time? Um, I like to sketch out for fashion, my, for fashion sketches, and I like to probably like just stay inside. Yeah, uh, that's great. And, uh, yeah, sketching, science, or fashion, want to go into fashion design someday? Are you thinking about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody wants to look good, and if you can make people look good, they're going to like you. We like you. Good luck in the second half. Let's talk to your other teammate here. Let's talk to uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah, nice to have you on the show. I like how you listen to the questions. You pick out all the words I say. You must be a very good student, not just in science, but I've been in a lot of other subjects as well. Tell me how you prepared for the science bowl. Um, like Stephanie said, uh, we, we, we have been watching science bowl videos, the past videos to try to train and see and test our knowledge to train. Yeah, well, you're doing all the right things. And I'll ask you what I asked your teammates. What do you do in your spare time? Because you can't study all the time. What, what do you do when you're not studying? When I'm not studying, I usually just play video games. Yeah, you sound like a normal young man to me, and you're doing a nice job here today. You keep it up in the second half. All right, Rogers Heights, time for your last nine questions. You're sitting on 145 points. I know you're going to add to that tally, so let's go to the let's get physical category for five points, and let's start out with a picture, a visual for let's get physical for five points. You know, in the Winter Olympics, there is a sport called curling. You can see it taking place right here. The players use brooms to warm up the ice, which reduces the amount of this force. There's a stone that's trying to be moved along that ice. They're trying to reduce what force by warming up the ice with that broom. Any ideas? Friction, maybe. Um, yeah, friction could be one. A uh, surface tension could also be one. Yeah. All right. Lander, it's your choice. Which one would, would you like? Friction. Friction is correct. Good. 
Five points to start out the second half. Yeah, let's see some smiles there. You guys, I know you're very serious, but also, you know, make sure you celebrate your, your successes here. For 15 points and let's get physical. Low-lying clouds can warm us by trapping the heat close to the earth. But high-level clouds can cool us by doing this to the so and sun's rays that are coming in. Any ideas, guys? Um, maybe it could reflect. Um, uh, Jeremiah's that's it. That's it. You got it. It reflects them back into space. Jeremiah, you're a great asset to this team. Chastity and Lander, all of you together. You're just terrific. Let's go to the 25-pointer and let's get physical. When freezing temperatures threaten crops in Florida, like oranges and grapefruits, the farmers will spray them with water so that ice forms on the fruit. Curiously, this protects the fruit because ice is a very good what, as Eskimos well know. Any idea, guys? Maybe kind of like a freezer to make it cooler. Or like an isolation. Uh, I was also thinking of parasites because it kind of protects it from any other creature. Parasite. Lander, what, what word did you say? Parasite. Not a parasite. Chastin, you had the right idea about some protection in there. It's an insulator. It mm -hmm. insulates you. It keeps the heat inside there, and it, it also keeps the, the cold out. So, uh, yeah, an insulator was the right answer there. Let's move on to potpourri for five points. A team of... You'll, you'll enjoy this. I enjoyed this. A team of scientists in Israel have actually trained one of these fish to drive an FOV, a fish-operated vehicle, inside their tank. Imagine it. Here's a fish on a little vehicle in their tank. The largest of these fish are called koi, K-O-I. But most people know them as a kind of cheesy cracker. A goldfish? A goldfish, yeah. The goldfish cracker and koi are very big, very big examples of goldfish. Goldfish is right. Good. Pat yourself on the back. Potpourri for 15 points. That's the way you land her. On the floor of the Atlantic Ocean are millions of nests of a fish called ice fish, creatures that are blue because their blood is not iron-based and red like ours, but based on this chemical element with the symbol capital C, small u. C-U is the symbol for what chemical element that makes these ice fish have blue blood? Cuprum? Cuprum or copper, maybe? That's it. That's it. And Chasta, you were right. Cuprium is where the word copper comes from, so copper is the right answer. You got yourself 15 points. Good job. 25 points in potpourri. When preparing to recycle items made of this substance, check the resin identification code inside the triangle of chasing arrows on the bottom. Numbers one and two, kinds of polyethylene, are fairly easy to recycle. Polyethylene is a kind of what? Uh, my first idea was plastic. Mine too. That's it. Yep. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, you can look on the bottom of something plastic and you'll see those little arrows going around. And this, the number in there tells you whether or not it can be recycled or not. So check that out before you put it out for the recycling. Good answer. 25 points for plastic. Last three questions. Here we go. Dateline five. Ellen DeGeneres, who had a talk show on TV, just opened a research center in Rwanda, an African country to carry on the work of the late scientist Diane Fossey, a scientist renowned for studying these largest of the primates. Any ideas? Because I know primates like relate to monkeys, right? So uh, we just have to think of a primate. Maybe a gorilla? Yeah, probably a gorilla. It could also be apes. Apes. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, the largest of the primates, uh, Lander? Uh, let's go with gorilla. It is gorilla, absolutely right. Had you said apes, I would have pr prodded you to give me a specific ape too. So you got yourself five points with gorillas. Let's go to the date line for 15. This year marks the 200th anniversary of Gregor Mendel's birth. Mendel, if you remember, was that Austrian monk who famously used pea plants and said whether they were tall or short or made pink or white flowers was because of something called he called them differentiating characteristics. We know them today better as these reproductive units known by what G initialed four letter name. Any ideas? Um, so, so he said a four letter name that means reproduce. That means uh, it starts with the letter G. Maybe Germany. Okay. Um, Mr. C, can you repeat the question, please? Yes, I will. Uh, Gregor Mendel, the famous Austrian monk who died 200 years ago, he famously did experiments on pea plants that showed whether the plants were tall or short or produced pink flowers or white flowers was determined by things he called differentiating characteristics. We now know those things, those characteristics, those differentiating characteristics, those reproductive units by what four letter G initialed word? Genes. Genes is right, absolutely right. Whether they're dominant genes or recessive genes, good. Excellent answer. Last question of the game 25 points on Dateline. It makes sense that a new electric vehicle has been named Ionic, I O N I C. I'm not, wait, I'm going to go out and buy myself an Ionic that runs on what same kind of battery that runs your smartphone and your computer. Any ideas? Electricity. Electricity. Uh, it could also be a direct current and uh, an alternate current, like a battery. Um, let's go with electricity. All right, again, what same kind of battery that runs your smartphone and your computer, that's known as a lithium ion battery, hence the word ionic. And you've, you've probably seen many stories that these lithium ion batteries sometimes can burst into flame, which is why, you know, if you put them on an airplane, you know, they, they, they were worried about people storing them in the cargo hold and all because they can break into flames. So correct answer there was lithium ion, but you still had a great second round. So you end the game with 230 points, Rogers Heights. Excellent work. Let's see if that gets you into the next round. Congratulations, guys. It's now time to welcome back that team from Whitehall Elementary School. Also a wonderful first round. Let's find out about our players here. They're all experienced. They know their science. Let's start with the captain, Emanata. Emanata, tell us a little bit about how your school part prepares for the science bowl. It has a history of excellence, a history of winning this bowl. You don't have to share all of your secret sauce with us, but tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, we sometimes watch past games just to see like how other teams handle their questions. And we have slideshows that we study and it helps us a lot. Yeah, kind of scoping out the competition. Uh, athletic teams do that as well. You want to see what you're up against and see how other people do it. And uh, let me ask you, uh, obviously, you're excellent as a science student. Is there any particular kind of science you like best? Um, I kind of like all sciences, but there, I don't think there's one that I would put on top, but I like genetics. I think it's really interesting. Absolutely right. Yes. And we keep finding out more and more about genetics and uh, yeah, there's so many, so many fields out there and um, it's kind of hard to pick one, but yeah, if you're an omnivorous scientist, so you like them all. Keep up your good work in the second half here, Aminata. Let's go to your teammates. Let's go to Lucas. Hey, Lucas, good to have you here today. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I see you're a safety patrol there. Uh, how long have you been doing that? Um, for like the start of the school year at the beginning. Yeah, I started 
Yeah. So you've got a, a, a post of responsibility there, and I hope the students respect you, and that the badge gives you some credibility out there. Tell us about science. Uh, I was asking Aminata if she had a particular science she liked. She said uh, she had to pick maybe genetics, but how about you, zoology or archaeology or uh, physics? Do you have a particular science you like? Uh, I find pretty much all science interesting, but I especially like like space science or astro science. Yeah, I think that's well, interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Well, your generation uh, could be the one that goes to Mars. You know, Elon Musk is trying to get that a spaceship to be able to take people up there and we might have figured would you like to travel into space yourself uh yeah i think it would be neat to go to space yeah it certainly would be all right you're you're a neat young man and you're playing a good game let's talk to your other teammate here let's talk to um uh sebastian sebastian nice to have you with us today you're wearing your uh science bowl shirt do you feel that brings you luck um, uh, kind of it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yeah. Uh, luck is something you make for yourself, and obviously you've you've made your own luck because you prepared well for this. How did you prepare for the science bowl? Um, so um, during spring break, I watched a lot of the science bowl videos. I also um mm -hmm. watched some TV. It had some science in it, so I liked that and stuff. Excellent, excellent way to prepare. Uh, I asked your two teammates if they had a particular kind of science, a branch of science that they particularly liked. Let me ask the same question of you. Um, I kind of like body systems. I'm not gonna lie. Like, um, I have a, I have a, um, a big book at home, like all about it. So, um, and, and I'm really interested in it. And you know, uh, this body is the only one we get and you try to keep it moving and uh, keep it healthy. The more you know about it, the better the chances are that you're gonna take good care of it. So I admire you for that. All right, White Howard, it's time for your last nine questions. You're sitting on 155 points. That's a great score. Let's see if you can add to it. Let's go to Let's Get Physical for five points. Here we go. In 1972, NASA launched Pioneer 10, a spacecraft that was originally meant to get good photos of this fifth planet but which is still heading out into the universe some 50 years later. Name that fifth planet. I think it's um, that kind of... No, Oh, wait, yeah, Jupiter. 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 Okay, Jupiter. Emanata, what's your answer? Jupiter. It is Jupiter, absolutely right. Let's go to the 15-point question and let's get physical. This is very interesting. When a python swallows a large animal like an antelope, it has to digest it before the antelope starts to rot inside its stomach, which could then kill the snake with decomposing gases. So the python's stomach has much stronger acid than we have in ours. It registers a one on this scale. Uh, the, is it pH? Yeah, pH, I think. That's right, the pH scale. Ours, by contrast, is just 0.4, but a one makes for extremely, extremely uh, acidic. All right, uh, ours is a one, excuse me, 0.4 for the python. For 25 points, and let's get physical. The only reason our smartphones and computers exist and work so well is because of the electrical conductivity of tiny chips made of this chemical element with the symbol capital S, small i. Silicon? Silicon? Yeah, it's silicon. silicon is right. Yes, silicon chips, and they are in in they are at a premium right now, and that's why we can't get a, enough. And uh, uh, it is it's causing a. Uh, a lot of short supplies. Let's go to Pope Brief for five points and show you a picture. Five points, a visual question for Whitehall. This Okapi, O-K-A-P-I, which lives deep in the African jungle, bears a striking resemblance, if not quite the height, to what other animal that is found on the plains of Africa? I think it's the giraffe. 
because the giraffes live on the Africa plain and yeah. they're very tall. Yeah. So. I was going to say they're very tall. They're very tall. Yeah. Giraffe is the correct answer. Yes, indeed. I was thinking you might say zebra because its rump is striped, which is why I threw in the contrast between deep forest and plains and also height. And you heard that properly. Good. 15 points in potpourri. One of the main sources of greenhouse gases is cows. <laughs> Every day, they release large quantities of methane and other gases when they fart, <laughs> and also when they do this, the same thing a baby does after having its bottle of milk. Um, burp, burp, burp. Burp, that's right. They burp out a lot of methane and other greenhouse gases. 25 points in potpourri. The three domains of Earth's living things are animals, plants, and this group, that includes such one-celled organisms as Salmonella, E. coli, and Streptococci. I think it's bacteria. Yeah, it was thinking the same thing. Is that what we want to go with? Yeah, let's go with bacteria. Bacteria? All right. It is bacteria. Absolutely right. Salmonella, E. coli, and Streptococcus, Streptococcus, and Streptococci, they are all bacteria. Well done. Let's go to your last three questions. So go to Dateline for five points with a multiple choice question. Listen carefully. The Smithsonian Museum recently honored a woman by the name of Roxy Laybourne, a famous forensic ornithologist. Who did which of the following? Track down thieves who stole objects from archeological sites. Uncovered fake dinosaur bones being passed off, passed off as real or looked at the engines of crashed airplanes to see what birds might have been sucked in to cause the crash. Um, I'm what are you really guys thinking? not sure, but I think it's uh, C. Looking at what... Okay, I'm hearing a lot of ferment there, guys. What do you think, Amanada? What's your answer? The, the third one. The third one, absolutely right. The clue there was an ornithologist, a forensic ornithologist. Birds that are sucked into plane engines, and she could take, she has passed away. We got to know her here on our science shows. She could take the feathers out of there, and she could identify the bird species by even fragments of a feather. She was amazing. 15 points in Dateline, good answer. The best way to detect the presence of the coronavirus is with the PCR test, which stands for polymerase chain reaction. Your nasal sample is checked for the presence of any viral RNA, which is then multiplied into this other nucleic acid to see if the virus is really present. DNA, I think. DNA, DNA is right, yeah, that's DNA. the other one, correct. Last question of the game for you is a 25 pointer in Dateline. 100 years ago, a scientist by the name of Frederick Banting injected a 14-year-old boy with this hormone that he found could be used to treat diabetes. It worked, and Banting won a Nobel Prize. Name that hormone. Oh, uh, uh, come well, that, diabetes is like, well, um, when you have too much um, sugar in your like, water, yeah, you can't, like, work out the sugar. Oh, dang it. Yeah. Yeah. Something. Like, the opposite or something. That would be acid, sugar or something like that. Yeah. Uh, correct answer there, the one that you're searching for, folks, and they advertise it on television so many times, and the cost of it is sky high, and we're trying to bring the cost down. It is insulin. Insulin is the hormone used to treat diabetes. But that doesn't hurt you because you still have a total score today of 265. 265. Nicely done, Whitehall. Well, you could tell this was a semifinal game because these students did not miss many. Did you watch how they worked together? You know, they were finishing each other's thoughts, each other's thoughts and sentences. True marks of elite Science Bowl students, and we're proud of everybody here today. We do have the first of our four semifinalists. Our final tally today is Rogers Heights 230, 
Whitehall 265. Whitehall, congratulations. We will see you in the next round. And Rogers Heights, let's have a nice round of applause for you and for everybody for just terrific play here today. I hope you at home were able to keep up and improve your science IQs, but also I hope you sat back and just marveled at uh, the wonderful students we have here in Prince George's County and how much they know and the honor they bring to themselves and their schools and their families. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time on another semi semifinal match right here on the Science Bowl. Till then, I'm Dave Zarin. Bye-bye, everybody.